Yes, I Amen. Amen. Again, welcome, welcome. God is good this morning. Our worship has been nothing but amazing. The word of God has given us instruction. Amen. That we get to March new, right? Is a new order, is a new thing, is a new season, is a new day. Amen. Kind of like reminds me of the song. It's a, a fresh anointing coming our way. Amen. Hallelujah. So I just want to uh, remind you that, right? There's a fresh anointing coming your way, right? And uh, I just want to pray really quickly before we get into the word. Amen. Praise God. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you. We thank you for this morning. We thank you for the service. We thank you, Father, for what you're about to do and what you have already done, oh God. And I thank you for the present moment. I pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would increase you and decrease me, oh God. Use me, Lord, Father God, however way you feel fit. Thank you for sharing this word with me, oh God, that has ministered to me tremendously. And now it's going to minister to your people. I pray that their hearts be ready, oh God. If there's something, oh God, that is not of you please remove it oh god change the script it's not my script it's your script so we ask that the father the son and the holy spirit will reside in this moment in this place with those that are with us and those that are listening we thank you we love you and we give you all the glory and pray all of this in jesus name amen 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 praise god praise god hallelujah so last week we had an amazing weekend amen we had our installation service where there were intercessors teachers and evangelists was was uh, honored, amen. Uh, Casa de la Paz is really excited to have uh, walked with, with the journey that we've walked, amen. The daily prayer group is 680 days um, that we come together every morning, praise the Lord. And, you know, we've installed also our mama, our church mother, amen. And so we're really excited about what's to come, amen. So uh, I know I learned a couple of things quite, and, and the one lesson that I really learned is that I can't do everything and for that matter, anything by myself, amen. That's why we're one body, hallelujah. That's why we're one body. And so today's sermon's topic is that you have the capacity, amen. You have the capacity. But I want you to write it a little differently in your notes, right? So instead of writing capacity, right, the way you normally would, I want you to write it kappa and then city, the word city, you're going to use a capital C. So it's kappa and city, capacity, right? Amen. And hold that in your back pocket for a little while. So what, when I looked up the word capacity, it states that it's the maximum amount that something can contain, right? It's the maximum amount that something can contain. And the example given is that the capacity of the freezer is 1.1 cubic feet. So the capacity of the freezer is 1.1 cubic feet. Right. So I want to tell you that this is a season whereby you have the capacity, right? You have the capacity to withstand whatever comes your way. You have the capacity to contain that of which God has deposited in you. Why? Because God has established you. Amen. But he doesn't only establish you. He gives you what you need. Right. So today is about how you have the capacity. Right, kind of like that example. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 8, it states, And God is able to make all grace abound to toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. Amen. So he gives you the capacity, and he, then he abounds around you. Amen. He, the grace abounds toward you, right? so that you can have all sufficiency in all things. It doesn't say some things, it says all things may have an abundance for every good work. Amen, remember that. For every good work, there will be an abundance. Hallelujah, not the way we see abundance, but the way God provides abundance. It also states that um, the essential meaning of capacity is the ability to hold or contain people or things. Hold, listen to that. The essential meaning of capacity is the ability to hold or contain people or things. Amen. Sometimes when we look at the word capacity, we look at it as, as just that, right? So the largest amount of number, right, that can be held or contained. So for example, when you walk into a restaurant, right, if you're like me, I'll look and see what's the capacity of that establishment, right? And I tend to do a quick eye check to see right? What's the capacity? 
right? And so oftentimes, what happens is that you'll see a sign that says, you know, the capacity is 50 people. You get on an elevator, there's a capacity, which means there's only so much that you can hold, but there is a capacity. You have the capacity to be there with others, right? Because it tells us, right, that is to hold people. We have the ability to hold people or things. We have the capacity to hold space for another person. What is holding space? Now, this is a term. Um, that we've become very familiar with, right? Within the social work field, within the nursing field, and any helping profession, right? Is holding space. And um, I like the term, according to Rita Walker, she's a clinical uh, psychologist, researcher professor at the University of Houston, and the author of The Unapologetic Guide to Black Mental Health. She states that holding space for someone can mean different things for different people, but at a minimum, it means taking the initiative without any prompting to be empathetic to another person's situation or circumstance and making time for the individual to do whatever it is needed for them, like voicing hurt, anger, or another strong emotion and receiving whatever they need to communicate in a way that is supportive and non-judgmental. That was a mouthful. So let me break it down for you. Pretty much what it's saying is that you get to hold a space, which means you get, you get to give someone the ear, right, that they need in order for them to be alleviated, right? But let me tell you, Right. Let me remind you that you have the capacity to hold people. However, remember, you do not take the place of Jesus Christ. Amen. You get to pray for, for the Lord to take the pain and the hurt away. Just because you hold space doesn't mean that you take over. Amen. Just because you hold space doesn't mean you take over. Oh Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So just because we hold a space does not mean that we take over. Amen. Hallelujah. If you want to praise God, go ahead and unmute yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. Because God is amazing. So let me remind you, right, that uh, we don't do this alone. Amen. We don't do this alone. So even though we're reading, learning about this term now, right? It's not new under the sun because God tells us to hold space for one another. And you may ask, how is, how is it that he's asking us to hold space? Well, in Galatians chapter six, verses two, it says, right? But let me start from uh, verse one. It states, brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. It says, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Amen. Bear each other's burdens so you can fulfill the law of Christ. Amen. Right? So it is already in scripture. Amen. Yeah. That we are to hold, to, to, take on each other's burdens, amen, to support, right? But also remember that Christ already died for all of that, amen? Hallelujah, so you get to pray. Hallelujah, praise God. So as stated earlier, I learned a few things during last week's service, amen? And one was that I can't do everything or in, uh, by myself, right? I can't. That's why we're one body. However, there will be certain things that would have you would have to think different, right? So I want to remind you, right, that what I, what I shared a couple of weeks ago, and I shared three points, right? And one of them was that um, your beliefs, right? Your beliefs will have you think differently, will have you think small, right? And the word of God says that we were gonna have a new order. This is why I love, love, love Sundays. And we, you know, when the scripture is read, the opening scripture, there's no, really no conversation between me and Reverend Dr. Paula because, because of that, amen, because God is with us. And so our beliefs, right, will dictate your thoughts. If you believe all things are possible through Christ who strengthens us, then we 
then you are confronted. When you're confronted with adversity, you know you can work it out, right? But if you have allowed your limiting beliefs, that of which you have created, right, that you're not enough, that you're not good enough, right, then guess what? That limiting belief will then become true, and it becomes your truth, right? Because it starts with your beliefs, right? Your thoughts is the second thing, right? A thought is an idea or an opinion produced by thinking or occurring currently in your mind, suddenly in your mind, right? So you are what you think, not you are what you eat, but you are what you think. If you believe that God says uh, says about you, then you're okay, right? Because then you walk in confidence. God loves you, amen? He cares about you. He has a plan for you. When we start thinking that way, we change our walk, right? Then we have our emotions right? Our thoughts, you see, our beliefs dictates our thoughts, which then dictates our emotions, right? So if you're thinking that you're little, that you, that you, what you have to say doesn't work, but what you have to say has no validity, what you have to say has no weight, what you have to say is nothing, then guess what, right? Then your emotions will dictate that as well. You will walk around like that you will walk around lacking joy even though god gives you joy in your heart right you would then walk around as if life really is not worth anything you walk around as a dead person your body is here but your soul your spirit is dead right so let's remember that right your beliefs dictate your thoughts your thoughts dictate your emotions your emotions then dictate your actions what do you think would happen if you allow the old man, and when I say the old man, the man that, the person that you were before you knew Christ to dictate your beliefs and your emotions, right? Only you know what that would be like, right? So let me uh, remind you in Ephesians chapter, uh, the second chapter, verses two to three, it says, in which you used to live when you follow the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient, right? So that was how we used to walk before, right? All of us also lived among them at one time, right? Gratifying the cravings of the flesh and following its desires and thoughts like the rest, we were by nature the serving of the wrath. Amen. So our old man was deserving of all of that. Why? Because we were doing things that were not pleasing to God. Amen. So let's go back. So the beliefs, dictates your thoughts, your thoughts then dictates your emotions, your emotions dictates your actions, and then what do you think the outcome is going to be, right? What do you think the outcome, if you are doing the same things as of old, as you are now called as a new creation, but you still want to act like you were before, what do you think the outcome is going to be? Now, let's start with the first outcome. The first outcome is you. Your mind will be a battlefield right? Your mind will be a battlefield. Why? Because God is calling you to greatness, but you want to stick to to being mediocre. God is calling you to step out and you still want to stay in. Kind of like the song, right? At the table, right? Your shackles are not needed there anymore. God cleaned that. God cleared that for you. Jesus died on the cross for that. So the outcome that you're going to be dictating to yourself is that one of turmoil, Amen. You would be in turmoil. You will be in constant war with yourself because God is calling you to greatness. And then the thing is that when people see your greatness and tell you about your greatness, guess what happens? You get offended. And now they're crazy. Now they don't know what they're, what you're what you're talking about because of that war that you constantly have inside the why because you want to operate the same way you operated up until you gave your life to Christ now the other outcome that I want to talk to you about is the larger scale because you hold yourself so tiny because you hold yourself so small the people that need to hear a message that God has deposited in you that only you can give are dying they are perishing. They are dead. Right? And they may not be dead physically, but they're dead spiritually. And so what happens is that there is no interruption. So you see, there's two outcomes falling in place here, right? There's the one of the one you created, the smallness, 
and the I can't and I'm not enough. And then the other outcome is that because of your thoughts and you're thinking that way and because you don't want to activate that of which God has given you, then the world is perishing. You see, we in the church, we don't, we, we don't have that luxury. We don't have that luxury. We know we live in some crazy times. Amen. So I want to talk to you about your capacity. Your capacity. And so I want to share a little bit. Last week, um, that was another learning experience, right? And also a time for me to reflect and be grateful. You know, sometimes we do, we do, we do, we do, and we don't take the time to sit and look and see how the goodness of God, when we say yes, when we let go of that old man and we say yes, we're going to accept Jesus Christ and there's a new man now, there's a new me, there's a new, right? The devil's not operating in me. I'm not allowing that anymore. Now, am I saying that it's peachy keens from, from, from the time that you give yourself to the Lord moving forward? No, it's probably the worst part of your life. Why? Because now the enemy wants you back. Right, so now he's gonna use even the people in the church or the people in the ministry or the people that you're walking with in ministry to say, oh, look at that one. Oh, look at this, right? Because that's how it works, right? But I wanna remind you that there's a new capacity in you. And the way in which that uh, showed up was when we started this prayer line 680 days ago, right? We started it with the, with the idea that we wanted to be a support place, right? For people who were experiencing COVID or were by themselves or couldn't go out, right? We were shut down, locked down. We, they threw away the key for a few months on us, right? There was only limited um, ways and places that we can go to. But during that time, our capacity grew, amen? We were able to start ministries, we started various ministries, amen. We were able to start those things that um, were put in our heart that we prayed for, right? We prayed for to be able to be a place where people can come and heal. You see, God said, phone line's not enough for that, right? And so the hour in the word came. But then when the hour of the word came and people started coming in, they, we had a lot of new people. And they and, and there was then the desire that people would get to know Jesus and get to know the word. But how can they get to know the word if they don't read the Bible? Because that's where the word is, right? And we don't want to leave everything on a on a human person to teach, right? I this ministry is the type of ministry that says you get to read the word of God and you get to see what God is telling you, and then we'll talk. Amen. Because we have different lives and different things and we can't sit there and say that the word of god is alive and we're gonna then do our own interpretation amen everybody's life is different everybody's life is different so bible study showed up then we said you know what let's worship god because you know what one of our weapons is our worship and david's ministry was was birthed amen under under minister yvette but that wasn't enough we had people that were coming in who had businesses, right? People that were coming in and, and, and they were doing business, not successful. So we, we started doing entrepreneurship, doing business God's way, infusing God's word into things that we do on a day-to-day -day life. Amen. And then we did the alignment with God. Hallelujah. And so now we're moving forward. Why? Because we prayed. <laughs> we prayed. We prayed and we asked God enlarge our territory and in first chronicles chapter 4 10 right the prayer of jabez and jabez called on the god of israel saying all oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil that i may not cause pain so what did God do? God granted him what he requested. Amen. Why? Because it was in alignment with God's word. Hallelujah. It was in alignment with God's word. You think you have to do everything on your own, but you don't. Amen. You see, that's when we fall short. When we think we have to do everything alone and we think it has to look a certain way. Right? And you don't. That's why we have these cliches. It takes a village to raise a child. I think whoever did that had some kind of wisdom, right? 
because it does take a village to raise a child. But I got to tell you, it takes a bigger village to keep an adult. Amen. Right. So when did we lose this? When did we lose sight of that? You see, God has given us the capacity. He has given us the ability to fulfill his purpose. And he's about to enlarge your territory. And for some of us, he's going to enlarge more. He's going to give us different territories. Amen. The prayer of Jabez is getting ready to be realized in your life. Amen. And I'm a firm believer that the word of God came today. Amen. It came today and it said you have to do things differently, right? We have to put things in order. We're going to march differently. Amen. So let me break the word a little bit for you the way in which God gave it to me. And so capa, right? Capa in Spanish means abrigo, which means a, 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 a coat, right? It, like a shawl. It means a something that you put over, right? To cover you, amen? To cover you, right? So what I want to share with you is that God has already given you the in the in the capacity he's already giving you the covering to take over that territory to take that territory to enlarge your territory to give you that city amen capacity he has given you the mantle amen the mantle means covering hallelujah so what are you waiting for capacity kappa kappa he's giving you that coat he's giving you that covering he's giving you everything that you already need. You are not uncovered. If you already say that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you are covered. Amen. You have been given everything you need in order to enlarge your territory. Amen. So people of God, what are you waiting for? God is enlarging your territory based on your faithfulness. Amen. Are you hot? Are you cold? Is the message deposited in you going to get to those who are dying spiritually? Or are you going to allow your old man or woman that didn't know God? Come on, listen to this people of God that didn't know God. Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit dictate your feelings, which become your thoughts, which then become which then become your emotions. Then your emotions affect your actions, which then dictate your outcome. Not just the outcome within yourself, but the outcome for the world, right? Which glorifies who? Glorifies the enemy. Or are you going to allow the new man, the new woman who accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior to, and became a new creation? Are you going to choose different? It's up to you. But remember, the, lo the longer you wait, the longer you have a battle in your mind and the, and, and the longer the territory, the city, right? The kappa, the covering in the city is abandoned so that the enemy and his army can continue to hold the, hostage, the, the souls hostage and the spirit hostage. It's up to you. But I want to remind you that you have the capacity. You have the kappa city right? You have the covering, you have the mantle, you have everything that's needed. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give God the praise. Give God the praise. Give God the praise. Amen. Because you have the capacity. You have the capacity. Kappa city. So whenever you look at that word, remember, kappa means coat in Spanish, which means you're covered. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you. We want to thank you. We want to love you, Lord. I pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you stir up your people, oh God. Lord, Father God, stir up your people, Lord Jesus, to understand and to believe that they have the capacity, that you are enlarging their territory, oh God. Lord, Father God, that for some, there's not, there's not just one, but many territories, oh God. I pray, Lord Jesus, right now in the name of Jesus, that you will touch their spirit, that the Holy Spirit will touch them, oh God, and show them, oh God, that the capacity is within us them oh god that they can move mountains lord because you said that we can do all things through christ jesus and so lord father god i thank you for this word i thank you lord for those that heard it i thank you lord that for those that are gonna run with it i thank you in advance oh god for the souls that will not continue to perish oh god but because the vision and the dreams that you have deposited on people will come to fruition oh god i thank you lord father god that you have 
created us for such a time as this. And I pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that if there's anyone, oh, Father God, among us who does not know Jesus, Lord, that they will give their lives up to the Lord right now in the name of Jesus. And so if you are that person, I pray that you bow your head that you bow your head right now and say, Lord, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I accept you, Lord, Father God, as my Lord and Savior. I am clear that you died on the cross for my sins, Lord, and that I will continue to walk in you, Lord, Father God. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would just touch me and come into my life, oh God. Take away that thing, the things that are not of you, oh God. Lord, Father God, give me a fresh anointing, oh God. Make me anew. I accept you in my heart in the name of Jesus. And let that be your prayer today as you give your life. And if you do not have a home church, I invite you to be with us. Amen. To be with us and know that this is your home church. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.